brofist to you all because once again the clock has struck and friday is here and what a week it has been big guild wars 2 launch wonderful expansion smooth as balls launch great story new characters no dragons but a horror theme right up my street absolutely perfect then we jumped into fi uh, fall guys with final fantasy 14 skins the quez were running wild yet no victory was to be had for your boy here as of course my fellow members decided to grab me at every simple opportunity but then again we came to the point where wow launched its hardcore servers and we are hosting the tournament of death sign up only within the community 37 souls enter and next friday one soul will remain Everybody has until Friday to prepare their character for the tournaments. And on Friday evening, it's going to go down as we all duel to the death with one standing and prizes to be given for everybody taking part. We've already had one, one person drop. Too much, too stressful. I have to say I'm having ludicrous fun. I would check out our highlights channel, our VODs channel for some of the events that have happened today. And some of my audience now thinks less of me as a human being and have been calling me the immoral. But I haven't died yet, and that's all that matters. I'm still alive. I might walk over the corpses of other people to get there, but I'm still standing. I'm still standing, and that's what matters. Let's have a fun drama time to see this week out. I am operating on about four hours sleep. We were playing WoW till 5 a.m. yesterday, and then back streaming again around 10. Uh, so we are running on empty and it is my son's birthday so for anybody tuning in who didn't miss today's stream i am not streaming on monday we are streaming on saturday we're not streaming on monday i will in fact be celebrating my son's birthday then so that's when it's going to be happening so recommendations for bex here we've got everything today from role play to despair considering what's happened today let's kick off with some despair i like the sound of that let's have some despair uh, despair is something that we relish in and we want it and it is called <laughs> how could you how could you oh that's inverse of what's supposed to happen let's change that how could you how could you despair emotes running wild how could you and our star of the show and one of our wonderful website supporters will be a Ashta will be the star of our show. Oh, betrayal. How could you? How could you? Okay. <clears throat> Let's get into it. Let's have some fun. Dear Mike and your wonderful chat. Today, I come before you with a tale that has shaken my trust in the game. Which game has shaken my faith? It is World of Warcraft. This can't be about today. This can't be. It was too soon. It's no way this story has been written today. Mike, I want to tell you I have played this game for years. And after my one-armed grandfather taught me how to play it. Ooh. No disrespect to your grandfather, but it's not intended to be played with one arm. Although I do believe the accessibility options make it possible. But he may teach you some interesting habits. That's all I'm saying. My mother and father were away a lot because they were doing charity work abroad. Okay, are you trying to, like, butter us up? Your fa your grandpa has one arm. Your mother and father go and do charity work. Uh, like, like angelic family. Is that what I'm looking at here? Like, the angelic family. I feel like you're setting us up for some big downfall. Because your family is responsible for the happiness of so many. I was lonely. And my grandfather would often look after me. And we would play World of Warcraft together. I haven't played for a long time. I went on to university to become a doctor. Okay. <laughs> so I could help people like my late parents. Oh, your parents are dead now. Your charity working parents are now dead is what you're saying. And you became a doctor. At university, I met my best friend, Majtar. Majtar was also a gamer. And being the only awkward gamers, we got on together like a house on fire. We have been best friends ever since. I started playing World of Warcraft again, but couldn't really get back into it. 
I was missing something. It seemed so bloated and full of systems and I didn't know about. Mashtar had heard about WoW but heard the players were toxic and he had never played. We stuck to other games and occasionally just talked about WoW whenever it came up. Lately, I learned about a new game mode coming to World of Warcraft. Classic Hardcore. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> if Bex... Bex... If I find out that you reached out to those two people... <sighs> <clears throat> I was so excited. I had been dying for a reason to play World of Warcraft with all the bloat and going back to that old experience I had. And I thought jumping into hardcore might be fun from what I'd heard. I quickly told Majtar and he was willing to try after I told him the tales of toxicity were wildly exaggerated. And that World of Warcraft was not full of poisonous people. I promised we'd be fine. We joined the server Neckrush. And found it funny that two servers were aptly named for two doctors to explore together. Neckrush and Stitches. We leveled and enjoyed our time. Pulling some things and running away when we were in over our heads. But together, as a team, we endured. It was just the distraction I needed because last week someone pushed my old blind dog into a canal and he floated off never to be seen again. They say Manchester is a safe place to live, but I'm starting to believe rumors about a canal pusher. I digress. We were enjoying our time. I was pushing past my despair and enjoying time with my best friend, Mashar, away from our busy schedule of saving lives as doctors. I was a warrior and he was a rogue. We got a quest to go into a crypt. Oh no. This one looks a bit sketch, I said. Ashtar laughed. Don't worry. As a team, we can't fail. We've got this. Plenty of people will be around doing that quest, and we can all help each other to get the quest done. I felt better about our odds as we approached this very deadly area. It made sense. Lots of people would be doing this quest, and only a psychopath would deny helping others for no apparent reason. We were getting... <laughs> we were getting rid of some trash outside. When a crappy geared warrior ran outside with more trash. Seeing that this person was clearly in trouble, we immediately jumped into action and saved him. And I instantly asked him if he would like to group. Oh, they did ask me if... Oh, they did ask me that. It was those people, wasn't it? He quickly responded with an abrupt, I can't, and didn't elaborate further. Kind of strange in this scary area on hardcore mode, but okay. And a little rude. But needless to say, we carried on. We don't need to group, of course. We're all after the same goal. And we'd just been here diligently clearing the trash outside, so he knew we were here for the quest as well. As he ran inside the crypt, we followed along. Time to get this quest done and move on. We rounded a corner, Majtar threw a dagger to get the attention of the mobs, and we were all ready. Me, Majtar, and the warrior all stood in a line, waiting to get into the brawl that awaited us in this tight, confined, claustrophobic area. I could not believe what happened next. I don't want to believe it. I hadn't felt such betrayal since the last time Preach said he would finish Elden Ring. It stung. But as all the enemies ran towards me and Majtar, the warrior, the one we had helped, 
the one that we had just saved outside of the crypt, ran straight past the mobs we were fighting, took the quest item, and ran past us again to the outside. He laughed hysterically as he left all the enemies to us. Master and I looked at each other as we were overcome with despair and zombies. And our characters died. And it was to be the end of our hardcore journey right there in that crypt. <laughs> the only positive is that this callous toxicity from this disturbed individual was apparently streamed live on Twitch. And can be now viewed on YouTube. <clears throat> Note from Bex, this is fine for stream. <sighs> Do I really have to re-watch this? Look, I'm sure it doesn't come across as bad as it was, right? There's no... <laughs> There's no way... <laughs> It comes across as bad as it was. <sighs> no! Captain stop Bosch. pulling the other one! Oh my I god! Know, I wouldn't want to get maced by my family. See, I said sorry. I said a cat group sorry. Okay. This is about to be the lowest point of my life. <laughs> I'm sorry, rogues. <laughs> I wish you good luck. I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of it. I'm not I'm not going to say I'm proud of it, but <laughs> we got the quest done. Look, it's hardcore. Everyone ev look. <sighs> I don't really have a defense, but <laughs> I don't I don't really <laughs> It was what's missing from this, to be clear, right? I just need to clear a couple of things up, all right? A couple of things. One, they didn't die. We checked afterwards. They didn't die. They did not die. Two, I had been trying to do that crypt for an hour on my own, and I had thrown so many resources at it. And I had barely scraped out with like 10% HP to safety several times. And I was done. I got what I needed. And I left. And I will be clear on the third thing. I'm not allowed to group. It's part of the tournament of death. Rules were not allowed to group. Outside of doing our dungeon, no group is allowed. So... In conclusion to this story, chat, if you ever see a warrior called Preach on Netcrash, remember to run every enemy you can towards him. He deserves no less. <sighs> Wonderful tale. Uh, it seems to be full of inaccuracies. That's all I'm going to say. It seems to be full of inaccuracies and therefore... <sighs> Therefore, it is I get what Majtar is. I, I saw it. I saw it. I know what it is. I know what it is. Uh, anyway, let's change gears a little bit. <clears throat> you rat bastard. <laughs> they didn't die. They were a group of strong players. They were fine. But I challenge anybody to fight three of those ghosts and zombies down in that tunnel. <sighs> Just for Majtar. <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, uh. this one is a thank you to Drama Time. 
which means specifically it's a thank you to me for being a good person with a good moral compass. Okay, that's what this means. Hey, Mike, and the gavel eager chat. This isn't a drama tale, but rather a short thank you to Mike. I've been watching Drama Time from YouTube for literally years. I love the PG content overall. I became a father two weeks ago. Prior to that, I've been raiding in SWOTOR steadily on three day a week basis. But because of the upcoming baby, I quit scheduled video games. And let's face it, Star Wars patch cadence is so slow that it merits a subscription once every three years. F in the chat. I remember you sharing somewhere how you took care of your boys when they were babies. You played consoles all night while the kids slept on your chest, allowing your wife to sleep. This is a genius move. <laughs> I have been using this for the past four days and it has calmed our nights so much and my wife sleeps much better. It's the ball of play. This is the maneuver. I haven't got a baby on hand, which is great, but... Oh. Kind of do. You have the baby here and controller like that. It's awesome. Lay on a couch or something. Just let the baby sleep on you. You can hear him breathing and you have the controller around and you let your wife get some much needed sleep, especially if she's breastfeeding because uh, them babies want feeding at all the hours. I'd been casually leveling in Lord of the Rings online for the past year or, so, year or so. This spring, they introduced landscape difficulty options, which is immensely fun. I started a new chapter and jumped into the hardest difficulty. While that system is on, the player is debuffed, so they deal less damage and take more damage by a significant margin. Normal mob in the open world, three to four hit you if you don't have a, a defensive up. And while I need to commit at least one OCD, to, uh, zero, zero GCD to kill the mob before I die. In addition, Sauron himself occasionally buffs the mobs with casual buffs like plus 50% damage done, minus 50% damage taken, 30% move speed, aggressive healing, or combinations while throwing fireballs. And those fireballs hit for 70% of max HP if I don't have a defensive up. Luckily, it's possible to dispel the buffs and dodge the fireballs. As you can imagine, this is wonderful when you are holding a baby with half a hand and playing with only a mouse. Oh, you're using a mouse? Okay. <laughs> Good thing I have one of the 20 buttons on the side. I want to show you a video of me having a duel of fates with a level 53 elite while being level 50 in the mines of Moria. You can show if you want, and my MMO presence on the internet is not linked publicly to me. Uh, it's short and fight for stream. But I've started to ramble. The point is that your tip has been so helpful and kept our marriage happy. Keep the drama coming. I'll be listening to it during the long nights with the kid fantastic i have not looked at lord of the rings online uh i mean i have i played it for about an hour and i was like this sucks <laughs> i didn't like it i didn't like it at all uh music is uh scary he healed back to full i don't know this sounds really annoying i faced two healing mobs in Tirisfall glades today and it oh you're dead <laughs> i'm holding a newborn baby can't type in chat are you streaming Are you streaming? I'm holding a newborn. Can't type in chat. Are you streaming doing this while your baby is on your chest? <laughs> that is a kind of ballsy move. He crit very hard. Attempt number four, the kill. Four attempts to kill Zahoff. I don't remember that from uh, Tolkien's works, but sure. It looks like you just had to burst it before it could heal back up. That's what it looks like to me. Got him. Do you get any loot for it? I don't know. Uh, Lord of the Rings Online. It is not currently on our list of potential games. Uh, it's not there. I will be uh, not adding more MMOs to our journey right now. But congratulations, sir. Uh, I just closed drama time. There we go. Perfect. Uh, Mines of Moria. Yes, I do know the Mines of Moria. I don't remember that. All right, let's go into some uh, role play, shall we? Let's head into the role play world. Uh, as Bex has clearly been role playing as authors today. Yep. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, a head start on drama. I don't know if we haven't had ERP in ages. We did block ERP for quite a while because people just started sending us their like filthy fan fiction.
we, we definitely had some stories which I felt like people were uh, <coughs> uh, essentially just living out their fantasies by having us read them. Uh, we need two RP guild names, ladies and gentlemen, from our live audience that is here on a Friday at 4 p.m. That's UK time, y'all. We are looking for two RP guild names. The Milkers, the Snuffly Waffles, Dagger from Behind, the Sneet Seat Sniffers. What role play are you guys doing? The Skull Cave Patrollers. Yes, yes. So many victims taken. Two sad rogues. <laughs> the Crypt Warders. Okay. Uh... <clears throat> Note from Bex. This author author sent me a list of puns so the story would get into drama time, and I fully endorse this behavior. Send me more puns. <sighs> Don't expect me to read them. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all well. I've been sitting on this tale for a while now, uh, more than a decade, actually. I can even feel a little. I even feel a little guilty that the time has come to share it. But at the same time, I learned a lot of very important lessons due to what happens in what I'm about to tell you. So even for that reason alone, I think there is value in sharing this story with an audience. Let me give you some context. For starters, a disclaimer. I have not included everything in the story. The full saga would be an absolute mess to try and explain. So I've tried to only focus on the parts surrounding one of the most thematically appropriate disasters of all. A Guild Wars 2 guild, which was destroyed due to infighting before the game even launched. Oh, you tried to build the team for the launch day experience. I see where we're going with this. Now... For those of you who are less familiar with the franchise and don't understand the irony, the first game was actually named after an in-universe period of history called the Guild Wars. I did not know that. <laughs> These wars ended before the start of the game. Anyway, how did this level of dysfunction even happen, you could ask? One word, players who wanted to roleplay. Okay. Okay. Obviously, this is going to get a little bit more complicated, but first, allow me to set the scene for you. Which means we're going back to 2007, when ArenaNet announced that they would be halting all development on my beloved game, Guild Wars 1, so they could develop the sequel. The developers presented us with a decent lore summary about the 250 years which would separate the two games and told us they'd give us plenty of updates before we got to play the beta in early 2008. Of course, after that announcement, after those promises, we heard nothing, absolutely nothing, until Gamescom's trailer release in August 2009. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Two years Two full years of stewing on the forums with nothing, nothing to go on but the promises made two years earlier, which had obviously fallen through. Those of us who stuck around in the community latched onto any teeny tiny scrap of information we could find, while naysayers openly began to call the project Vaporware. I want to tell you all this, though. So you understand that those of us who had managed to stay invested in the game during this time had a lot of dedication. We were the committed. We weren't going anywhere. We loved our game and we just wanted more. Although I think a more accurate description of how we were at the time would be deluded. It may help to explain some of the more unhinged nonsense which caused this to happen. At the very least, it'll give you all some context. So, in the wake of the now famous 2009 trailer, information started to come out relatively steadily. And by comparison with the long silence, it was like the golden era of speculation. We devoured every single interview, every video, break it down, analyze it from all angles, look for the secrets hidden within. Then, in 2010, 
the first playable demo arrived. And it was the evidence we needed that Guild Wars 2 was going to be the game we had all been waiting for. A true open world MMO. Unlike the most instanced world of the original Guild Wars. So it's understandable that we got so excited and also a little ahead of ourselves. You see, it wasn't long after this that the role players started to organize. Sheets were made, stories were formed. We wanted to hit the ground running when that game came out. We had, after all, waited so very, very long. And thus, an official Guild Wars 2 role players forum was founded. In this cabal, we would all gather together and prepare our guilds and characters for the launch. Whenever that was going to be. Now, Mike and audience, in all honesty, this story could just be about that forum and the nonsense I encountered on it while we waited for release. It's not, though. It went way past simple forum shenanigans. As the information kept coming, and the first open beta finally approached, such was our collective excitement that we spilled out of the forum and created our own Skype chat. It was the mother of all Skype groups. We would all join regularly in voice chats discussing our hopes and dreams. And who am I kidding? Immediately, this well-intentioned formation of players immediately descended into exactly the sort of shit-talking and garbage memes you would expect from a bunch of hyped-up gamers that had no game to play. But it was great. It was great. It was great. It was so fun. It was the perfect way to get to know one each other outside of the limitations of the written forum. This wasn't just a single guild's chat. This was an open group for anyone using the role players forum who was going to be playing on the EU servers, plus some oceanic players who hadn't chosen a data center yet. It was a melting pot of role playing creativity of all kinds. I don't exactly remember how it all began. That sounds silly after all this build-up, but honestly, the Skype group itself was fine. It was ridiculously big. You always woke up to several hundred unread messages, but I wasn't even the first uh, in the first of the voice calls. My youngest was a baby at the time, and I tempted, tempted to hop in and out as I was nursing. So I was used to just filling in the gaps of what I'd missed by interference. Inference. However, I do remember when I saw the first red flag. It was my first encounter with Marnlock. I didn't know who Marnlock was at the time. Obviously, with usually over 20 people in a single voice call at any one time, something Skype could actually manage back then. It was often just anarchy when you joined in. Even if most of the participants only ever lurked, but Marnlock had a very distinctive voice and accent. Almost cartoonishly British. And he stood out on this occasion, and those which followed, because he was bragging that he could and would get a pizza delivered to someone in the call, no matter where, if he knew where they lived. I can already guess how that sounds to you in the chat. Nowadays, I'd hope that uh, would be a one-way trip to the block list of everyone involved as he was clearly fishing for addresses. But these were earlier times, my friends. Innocent, naive times of the early internet. And while my own situation with a baby at home meant I was far too wary to go around giving my address to strangers on the internet, plenty of others in the group really, really wanted pizza. And we all listened in as across Europe, pizza began to arrive. And once certain people had started to actually get pizza, they all shared their delight and bestowed praise on Marnlock for how good he was. And Marnlock basked in the glory of the attention he was receiving for his pizza kindness. After that moment, after the Pizzagate, 
Barnlock became one of the core members of the community. A hugely popular guy who everyone was glad to see and who easily found a place in one of the larger guilds which was formed ahead of the next bait beta weekend. Guild 1, the Skull Cave Patrollers, I'd managed to snag a spot in as well, though it wasn't as well organized. And so when the beta weekend arrived, we were all able to experience the game together. I still have a picture somewhere, all 20 of us in the guild, excitedly anticipating the future adventures that we would go on together. But of course, I wouldn't be writing this story if that is how it went. Now, <laughs> red flag number one. The guild was run by a couple. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> that couple was Shad and Yusha. Shad and Yusha were in a long distance e relationship spanning across multiple countries. I never did find out how old they were. But with the ancient wisdom of my early 20s, I figured they were probably younger than me by at least a year or two. Yusha was close friends with one of the guild's officers, a popular woman called Moist Hug. Bex. A popular woman called Moist Hug. Bex. To be fair, this falls on Moist Hug for signing up to our website with that name. So... That's kind of on you. And it was somewhere around the second open beta weekend that these two had a falling out. It was significant enough that the guild fully split in half. Marnlock and I, along with several others, came down on the side of Moist Hug. And we split off from the Skull Cave patrollers into a smaller guild. As we plan on having a mercenary theme for our roleplay. This actually worked out just fine. We'd still be able to arrange contracts with the regular members of the Skull Cave patrollers. Just not Shad and Yusha themselves. But, to make things a little bit more confusing for you, at the same time as this was going on, I found myself in an even smaller clique with Marlock and an Australian player as we were role-playing a pre-launch story with our characters over Skype. And as we were chatting and planning our character arcs, the topic of the feud came up. Marlock wanted to resolve things. Marnlock had a plan to help mend those bridges. Marnlock had reached out to Moist Hug and was then going to talk to Yusha and he was going to patch things up between them as the foundation of the Skype group and pizza delivery man that we'd all come to know and love. That way, he figured, by the time the game comes out, everybody in this really creative community would get along just fine and it wouldn't be wouldn't that be such a much better experience for us all than this silly feuding nonsense that's going on right now i will admit i wasn't entirely sure it would work but after all this was pizza man this was marnlock the golden child the chosen one the bestowed if anyone could bring people back together surely it was marnlock and his wisdom that could do it he was the one that could glue us all back together. So a few days pass. And the three of us are in Scri Skype again. Not in Skype. This time, Marnlock had different news for us. And he was asking for our advice. Marnlock begins by telling us he has spoken extensively to Yusha. And that she had confided in him some important as yet unknown information. Namely, that the nature of Shad and Yusha's relationship was not great. He believed that, of course, Shad was the problem. That he had caused the feud between Yusha and Moist Hug in order to pull them apart. It was all Shad's fault that the guild had fractured. Now, at this point, I should clarify two very important details. Firstly, that Marnlock was about 10 years older than the rest of us. A single father to a disabled child... Hence, us accepting his offer to act as some sort of mediator. <laughs> Secondly, that Marnlock's position as Yusha's confidant came as out of the blue to me than as it does in this tale. I had already heard some rumors about Shad's attitude from others on the forum, 
So that news wasn't completely shocking. But I had also heard from others, including Moist Hug, that Yusha has a very long history of exaggeration. So I didn't take that as being cut and dry. And I was generally of the opinion that as internet strangers, we should probably leave this whole fucking can of worms alone. Especially because I don't know these people. <laughs> I, have no, I don't know them personally. Whereas Moist Hug and Yusha had been friends both online and IRL for literally years. Now, this is how I saw it, but Marnlock didn't see it that way. Besides, surely he had enough on his plate already. Marnlock, however, was not to be discouraged. The pizza god and even added his girlfriend to our trio Skype group. He wanted her to talk to Yusha, in his words, girl to girl. Now, <laughs> his girlfriend... <laughs> Would I ever rope Emma in? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Emma, we need some girl-to-girl -girl talk here. This is what we need. <clears throat> okay. Um, why? <laughs> I wouldn't do it. No way. His girlfriend was not a Guild Wars fan. She'd only ever really played World of Warcraft previously, but she thought maybe she could help, and she was willing to give it a shot. All right, she's going in. So... We dutifully tried to make room for her in our character group backstory. Why? Why does she need to be part of the roleplay story? To introduce her to the community? I think that's what it's got to be, right? They need to give her a role play story to mix in with the art. Yeah, she can't just turn up as somebody giving advice. She needs to be part of the role play. <sighs> so we dutifully tried to make room for her in our character's group backstory, even though she was not a role player. <laughs> and therefore, her hastily planned wide-eyed and naive Silvari character was generic and did not fit with our gritty mercenary band ladies and gentlemen we've got an amateur role player trying to mix in here we've got a rank amateur trying to mix in that's what we've got here for context mike if you play a silvari in guild wars 2 you're literally only just born as you leave the tutorial there are a lot of stereotypes about their innocence and inexperience and this was uh, particularly the case back then and remember we took this very seriously is that true you're literally born as you leave the tutorial. I don't know. I've never played a Silvari because why the fuck would you play a Silvari? <laughs> what the fuck, you lalafell ass motherfuckers? <laughs> get the fuck away. Scripe. Anyway, let's get back on track. We brought her into the game. Marnlock's girlfriend would often join our voice chats even when Marnlock wasn't available himself. Oh, that's a Sura. Oh, Silvari is the plant people. Also terrible. Also terrible. When y'all got mind controlled and we thought there was going to be a genocide, I was like, woohoo. <laughs> Leave us alone. <laughs> <clears throat> she was an... Amer uh, okay, when Marlock wasn't available himself, she would still show up. She was an American woman in her late 30s, and due to our various time zones and me being home with a baby, was often free to chit-chat with us while he was at work. Now, this is where the rot set in. You see, it was from talking to her that a lot of the red flags we hadn't noticed about Marnlock started to appear. Well, those red flags not only started to appear, but they started to get up and dance. She started saying, saying things like, I do love Marnlock, but he has issues. That's a really horrible way to describe your partner. I do love Emma, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, can you imagine saying that? I, I do love her, but, eh. <laughs> there's problems, there's problems. Oh, it sounds like a rock solid foundation, don't you agree? Sounds so good. <clears throat> 
He drank too much and was far from the devoted father he had told us uh, about himself online. And his mother was mostly taking care of his son for him. Overall, remember, she's just a girlfriend. She was starting to get a little tired of him. Thus, it was that I found myself hopelessly and helplessly caught in the middle of yet another failing relationship. For following Marnlock's advice, Shad and Yusha were now openly fighting in the open. And those who had sided with their half of the Skull Cave patrollers were fracturing once again. Some joining Moisog's guild, others tuning between either Yusha or Shad, and a few deciding that this was not what they were looking for when they joined a roleplay Skype call. <laughs> and ditching the whole thing altogether. That's me. <laughs> it's not, actually. I'm going to stick around and watch. I'm going to lean back. I'm going to stop joining in. But I am going to see what happens. I am going to see how it plays out 100% of the time. In hindsight, they were probably the smartest of the whole bunch. The problem was I had friends. I had made connections. I had plenty of friends in Moist Hugs Guild. The recently named Crypt Warders. And we're all excitedly anticipating Guild Wars 2 coming out. It was now tantalizingly close. It's right there. At least that's what was happening on the surface. In the background, I was picking up crap from both Marnlock and his girlfriend that more was afoot. Marnlock had decided to deliver yet more pizzas to people when he felt people were getting annoyed by him. How many people can I... True story. Live audience. If I bought you all a pizza, are you like a subscriber for life or what? What's happening? If I just get a pizza sent out to everybody... <laughs> is, that, is that it? Are we good? Let's get a pizza sent out. Are we like a sub for life? <laughs> is that it? Absolutely. 100%. That's all it takes. Not a good pizza. Like pepperoni at best. That's all you're getting. That's it. Try it and see what happens. I don't know. Give it a try. See what happens. <laughs> Yeah, no thanks. <clears throat> Following the second pizza giveaway, Marlock was now a significant figure in not just the Skull Cave patrollers, but the Crypt Waters as well, which you sure had kept control of, and obviously he was a cornerstone figure in the, the clique I was a part of. But he was increasingly becoming absent from the game. And it was Marlock's American girlfriend who ultimately clued us in to exactly what was going on. Marnlock was cheating on her. She hadn't liked the closeness of Yusha, but thankfully, it wasn't Yusha that he cheated, uh, that the cheating had happened with. It was someone he'd met in the real world. <clears throat> right? He had also started struggling with substance abuse, and there had been an instance in which he was in such a compromised state that his child wandered out of the house unsupervised? Bro. Without letting us know, Marnlock's mother had taken custody of the child. But obviously, they did not get more details than that as it was enough. Either way, Marnlock's girlfriend was worried about his now constant showboating and meddling with everyone else. And was really just another part of his compulsive disordered behavior. He just couldn't let go of things. He wanted to be involved in everything, the center of attention, and was just throwing money at situations. The one everyone wanted to have around. He felt good in the online world. From the very beginning, he'd placed himself in that position to satisfy this compulsion. Oh, yeah. I'm a hero online. Fucking wrecked on the outside. Makes sense. Happens a lot. The icing on the cake, though, if you can believe this is that I later found out that she had already dumped Marnlock and shacked up with another member of the Skype group that she had met while telling me all this. Although their relationship didn't last long. I think it was very much a rebound deal, though I have no idea who started it. Ultimately, everything collapsed very quickly here. Before Guild Wars 2 released in August of 2012, Marnlock decided dramatically in a video call that he made to everybody that he was no longer going to be buying anybody pizza. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have summoned you all this day. 
<laughs> this fine day to let you know that there'll be no more pizza. And that as a result, he would also no longer be playing any MMOs. He needed to get his life sorted out. He was going to step away from gaming and get professional help he clearly needed. And with that final declaration, he went silent on every single one of his accounts and Marnlock was never seen again. I do want to believe that he did get help because it truly wasn't his fault that the guild collapsed. Skull Cave patrollers usually formed in-game, focusing on parties in Divinity's Reach, and Shad helped form another guild with role players, angry about the accusations and maintaining they weren't true. Both guilds died very quickly, though. I never heard much about either of them. The guild 2, though, the Crypt Warders, held together long enough to form uh, during the Guild Wars 2 head start, with about 18 or so members. But in truth, the damage was done. As a group, we entered the game with too much baggage. There was already so many skeletons in our closets, it was hard to kill the skeletons in game. And past those first few days, only a small handful ever repped the guild, if they even logged in at all. Even Moist Hug had too many bad feelings about the whole thing to play and quickly disappeared. The guild's forum that I had spent time making never took off. For me, well, after I watched this, plus my own share of IRL drama, which prevented me from logging in as regularly as I'd like, I decided that perhaps MMORP wasn't really for me anyway. My, oh. <laughs> Why did you say that line? Why did you write that line? Which you know is going to get a little giggle out of me and then follow it up with, well, my marriage was on the rocks. Like, you just walked me into a trap, right? You clearly walked me into a trap. You set me up with a little lighthearted line about MMO roleplay and then followed it up with, and also my marriage was on the rocks. <sighs> and by the time... Oh, it gets worse. Oh my God, it gets worse. It gets worse. I hate this. And by the time I came through my separation... And managed to game more than a few spare hours a week again. I found that I was the only active person left in any of these groups. Although I made good friends with about three or four of them for several years outside of the game. At some point, most likely because all the original officers had left and I was still regularly logging in, I became the guild leader. I just logged in one day and there I was, in charge of about five or six people who hadn't played in months. I stayed in the, gu I stayed in the Crypt Warders to this very day. Because Guild Wars 2 allows you to join up to five guilds but I never sought out another role-playing group ever again. I could probably disband the guild at this point, kick the last few inactive members and leave myself so that it all finally dies. Perhaps I should, but a part of me can't let go of what? You joined a Skype forum. What the f <laughs> Even after all of this, you see, I still remember all those happy memories we shared together, but not in the guild, right? Nothing happened in the guild. And the hopes stay in the Skype call. Do that. And the helps we held for the future. It will never stop being sad to me that most of those memories took place before the game even released. Before the guild technically existed. A Skype group. <clears throat> and Marnlock, who had been by far the most passionate and motivated out of all of us, never properly got to play the game ever. He lost his online community, his relationship, his child, and his IRL stuff before the game came out. That's really dark. so i want a cautionary tale to you because much as marlock might have meddled and magnified the drama he didn't cause it a lot of it came from gossip and misinformation in the role-playing community hard to believe and all of it was made worse by a hype and excitement for a game which being honest only existed in our minds at that point the reality is much as both guilds were already fractured by drama before the servers went live, what really finished it off is the fact that most of us had spent so much time imagining what the game would be like. Oh, you legendary ringed it. Yeah, I've been there. And how amazing it would feel to play. That the reality could never live up to what we believed. So while an obvious moral of this story is to be wary of the likes of Marnlock when he's distributing free pizza over Skype, I think it's just important not to lose yourself to hype and place unrealistic expectations of what a game could be. But also, if you run into someone who just can't seem to stay away from the drama and always wants to fix things, it might be that they need the most help out of all. And then Marlock tried to play Hardcore Worm and sort of the crypt. No, they didn't. Thank you for your tale. And Marlock, guys, please don't accept free pizza from online strangers, right? We're, we're all better than that in 2023. 
We're all better than that. We are. That brings the end of drama for today. I'm off to celebrate my son's birthday. Super excited. We have a stream tomorrow. We are building a PC tomorrow for one of our viewers. We have got some WoW Classic Hardcore. And we are watching TennoCon in the evening. Some big Warframe announcements are coming in the evening. We were watching their live show. Sunday and Monday, no stream. No stream Sunday, Monday. All right. So I will pass on the best wishes from all of you. Thank you so much for wishing us a happy birthday. And I will see most of you hopefully tomorrow. But if not, I'll be back on Tuesday. All right. So be awesome. Be good. And I'll see you then. Love you guys. Thank you for a great week. It's been awesome. Bye, everybody.